the uh, what's going on today? Hey, Scott. Nothing much. Uh, let me bring my mic down. Yeah. Hey, Jamie. How are you today, buddy? Andy, I'm fantastic. It is. Uh, it's like Friday today. The markets are closed tomorrow. Yes, it is. It is like Friday, and we do appreciate uh, you guys who kind of are hanging out that extra hour because uh, a lot of people would just uh, ring the bell and be headed out to the the beach bar, or what have you. Uh, but you are dedicated, and you're coming to learn more. And we're here for you, and we we hope to show you some pretty cool stuff today. Uh, but before we do, let me let me just move on and get over our legal uh, issues real quick. And then we have to discuss and just want to remind everybody this webinar is for educational purposes only uh, you're going to be seeing some cool stuff here but nothing that you see or hear should be construed as investment advice that's what you're seeking uh, you might want to seek out an RIA or an, a registered broker uh, but uh, we're going to show you some some pretty cool stuff uh, and Jamie has some stuff on the docket and I have some stuff on the docket but before we do I kind of like to talk to you about what we do here at Trade Ideas besides offer you uh, the most incredible trading software, idea generation software on the planet. We also have exceptional support and education and training here. Uh, we have uh, the daily trading room with uh, Barry Onerson. He's a moderator in there and you can uh, basically look over the shoulder and watch his desktop, how he navigates the market. Uh, and uh, uh, you can it's just it's a great it's just a incredible forum you got over 500 traders in there you have some really good traders besides Barry uh, so a lot of good ideas being passed around a lot of good uh, alerts and scans being shared with each other and on top of that we have four webinars a week all at in the five Eastern times uh, time zone so every one Monday through Thursday you can come in at that time and check out a, uh, a good webinar and get more support in education and training. And it's usually a combination of me, Jamie, or Steve Gomez, and then we do throw a special treat in there on Wednesdays with the CEO, Dan Merkin, and Brad Williams. Great place to go and get a lot of your uh, questions answered. So, but we don't stop there, guys. I want to, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk more about the, the training part. Uh, with your subscription to Trade Ideas, you get a free one-on-one -on -one hour of power training and what it is it's you spend one hour with me Jamie or Steve uh, we use desktop sharing uh, technology uh, and we come in and view your screen and and speak with you and we help you navigate the software build layouts build alerts and we spend a whole hour with you and it's an incredible hour of uh, uh, that uh, will really help you you know, get started, or if you already got a pretty good idea of how the software is working, we can talk about trading uh, strategies and, and just go take it anywhere you want to take it to whatever makes you a better trader. This, uh, this uh, hour normally costs $99. You get it free when you subscribe to Trade Ideas, and that's even if you subscribe to a one-month uh, plan. All right, so let's go over our agenda for today. Uh, it's going. It's uh, going to be kind of short and sweet today. Uh, it's a market recap. At least we got a little more talk about uh, the market uh, because uh, we've been kind of breaking down a little bit. The technicals have. We'll talk about that. Holly recap. Kind of a messy day in the market and uh, a little bit messy with Holly too. But there was a couple of real good trades in there, especially one. We'll talk about. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about Alpha Predator Pro and how that can be used as a position trading. Uh, alert and while I'm on that talk I've ha heard people uh, a, a few questions this week directed toward me about what what are the what is pro on the end of your you know I got a few alerts where it's a trend change pro alpha predator tro pro a very simple setting and, and and I'll tell you why I did that and show you how I did that so you'll kind of understand what I'm looking for when I'm looking th through these pro windows uh, and then we'll open up for Q&A. I know a lot of you guys in here are still kicking the tires and, and, and you're learning the product. So we're going we're gonna to open up probably the last 30 minutes for Q&A. And if we don't have a lot of questions, and so be it, we'll all get out of here a little bit early. But uh, we'll hang around as long as you're firing away. Uh, so with that said, Jamie, I think I'll back out of this and head over to the uh, spy chart. Is that all right? That sounds like a plan. All right. 
let's pull it up here. That's uh, we like to uh, kind of use the spiders as our uh, uh, ETF for you know, major uh, market implications. It, it does uh, comprise of 500 uh, of the most uh, liquid and uh, higher cap stocks, uh, and it's by far the kind of the leading indicator when you're kind of talking. And, and it's it's the it's the indice that also that hedge funds and uh, mutual funds are are judged against uh, so, uh, or compared to, I should say, but. Um, so, but anyway, some very important stuff, and you can see it kind of happening as the, as the week uh, went on. We talked about how this line was holding so true, even this big day right here, the big gap down, closed back above the trend, tried to break several times last week. This week, it looks like we were just rolling over and put in this credible bounce back with the tail, but looks like the bulls kind of finally caved in the last couple of days here and you're starting to get that kind of a rolling over pattern we talk about sometimes uh, so and I mentioned uh, even back over here when we were bouncing and I think Steve was commenting you know how the bulls always come to the rescue and if you look back over the eight years they have but I said well, keep in mind Steve the last 30 days we are still hitting lower highs and high and um, lower lows right here lower low lower low. One could argue that this was a uh, a bounce right here was, uh, let me get rid of that, get off there. <laughs> uh, bounce, someone could argue that uh, we didn't uh, uh, move forward, we bounced right there and didn't go lower, but technically if you ask me that's just a lower high. This whole area right here is just a lower high. So we are hitting lower highs and now we're rolling over. So I would keep an eye out, you know, on this level, of course, where we bounced last week. That's going to be a level of support. If you go back over here, you'll also see what we call a little gap. Okay, so technically that gap was closed on this day right here. So now we're going to potentially go down on Monday and see if we can't knock down through this uh, uh, level here, which has kind of created a little line of support. And then below that, guys, I think you have to look at the 230 level. I mean, there's just not much to keep us, if we break this level right here, going to 230 and and beyond, potentially. So could it be the start of something big? Yes, I think it could. We've had, we've been in a bull market for a very long time. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but I personally don't think the fundamentals support it. Uh, but that's just my opinion. It doesn't matter. Price is the only thing that pays. Uh, so... Uh, that's the key levels I'd be watching right there. One, two. I am not going to pull up the, uh, go through all the cues in the in the Dow. They're they're both kind of all showing the same kind of pattern. Uh, we'll just kind of keep it here and keep it short and sweet. Uh, Jamie, do you have anything that you want to add uh, on this uh, on the spy chart there? No, you pretty much nailed it, Andy. And it's just like you know, reading any other you know chart pattern. You're right. More than likely, of course, we don't try to predict, but it's just telling us we might test that next little line right there. Um, and of course, who knows? We might bounce. We might not. We might get, uh, this might be the, this could be the top. But then again, it could not be the top. So, but we did break that trend line, you know, and that's really yep. what's been telling the story as of late. So, you know, whether we like it or not, that's what the market is doing. And, you know, as we always like to say, simply really doesn't matter whether the market is going up or down. There's always going to be plenty of good trading opportunities, but some of the trickiest times are in these little digestive phases where, you know, a move to one side or the other is imminent, whether that's the bounce or the follow through. Um, and so there was a lot of opportunity out there today. When we get into the Holly stuff, um, we're also going to be able to tell. And of course, as we were following along in real time today, that P&L, uh, graph that Holly displays of her daily portfolio, you know, once again, mm -hmm. it, it, it told us something, you know, and uh, sure. we'll go that in detail as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's about all I have as far as the uh, the market recap goes. I think this is probably a good time to uh, turn it over to Jamie, and uh, he'll go over uh, some of the, uh, uh, not a whole lot, but a couple of the uh, Holly trades, and I think he has some interesting things to talk about using a compare account that he brought up this morning in our uh, in our support webinar that I found very intriguing. So go ahead, Jamie. We see you. Will do, and I'm just going to pull up. I think I forgot to save the screenshot, but I did tweet it out earlier today, so I'll just use that as a reference point. 
uh, when we talk about that. I just want to go ahead and get it queued up here so that uh, I've got it ready. But you've got you've got eyes on my screen, correct? Mm -hmm. Sure right. do. All right, so uno momento. Okay, I've got that ready when we need to look at it. Okay, so once again, I want to thank everybody for hanging out late on a Thursday, which is really a Friday. And so interesting market action today. Um, we're used to the market just up, up, and away, and lo and behold, we're seeing some sellers come out of the woodwork for whatever reason. Could be uh, hedge funds or Leary going into a long weekend, or it just could be a function of the market. But the statistical model that we put in play here, Holly, um, had a pretty active day today. Um, I was talking about this with Steve and Andy earlier, and you know, I didn't know if it really, if still, if it means anything or not. But what I've noticed over watching Holly over the past, let's see, January, February, March, April. So she's about 15 months old now since we brought her online, and you know, over the months and the year, been watching Holly. It always seems like the most, the strangest days are when a lot of strategies show up. So we had 15 strategies, which I think I think that's about the most she's ever had, Andy. Usually when it gets up to about 14 or 15, I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be an interesting day. Mm -hmm. um, and sure enough, that, that was the case today. And, of course, out of the 15, we had four that were short and the rest long. And so before we get into, you know, some of the uh, – there, there was a lot of statistical noise, one could say, today, which is dictated by this, this ebb and flow of her P&L on risk off mode. And for those of you who are new, we can use Holly not only to take trades from because they're statistically weighted and that's really the the uh, the strong point of the AI model, but we can also learn other things by how well or you know how well it's doing uh, in the session thus far. So a lot of the times say when when the AI has a really good day and posts a two or three point gain on its trades. Um, we'll typically see a little bit of red and then maybe a, a spike up to green. It'll hover around that level and then eventually everything catches and we go green. And a lot of the times stay green for the rest of the day. Of course, we're going to ebb and flow up and down just like a stock chart would, right? But when we start to see the AI attempting to make trades, and by the way, the first one out of the shoot this morning, about 30 minutes, well, let me see here, make sure I'm seeing everything here. You know, about 37 minutes um, into the open is when Holly started firing off trades. And then we can see down, spikes back up to flat, then she goes down again. Not quite back up to flat again, but never really caught any traction today. So when we see the AI experiencing these types of results, we have to take notice and assimilate, okay, well, if this statistical model is having such a hard time getting green today, then that should tell me something. In other words, I better be very selective. I better pick my trades carefully and, uh, you know, um, not be too aggressive. Of course, there's always opportunity. Just on some days, there's a lot more than others. And today was a little bit tough of a read. And hey, Jamie, if I might add, th these were all longs too, people, uh, early in the morning. So <clears throat> she was long right. as the market was creeping her, but uh, she yeah, right. still couldn't get any traction. And that's a very good, that's a very good point because – going long in a market with a downdraft and still ending up only down 32 cents on the risk off. Not too shabby from a, from a stat model. Um, so we had about 19 trades, uh, right at 19 trades kick out today. All of those were long except for a couple of shorts. So we can see pretty even distribution. I guess the busiest guy was this uh, Carpe de Alpha, which has been performing quite well. Uh, over the past, we can see it uh, slightly, well, you know, came in at 51.6% and only performed at 25% today. And, of course, we've got the one-offs up here. Of course, it's going to show 100%. And, of course, the one-offs on the loser is going to say a big goose egg. Um, so, tough day for the stat model, but let's take a look at some of the highlights. And, by the way, when we're looking at the trades here, the two shorts that did trade were actually profitable in the risk-off mode uh, on this PLSC right here. Pretty interesting trade. You know, Steve and I were watching it, uh, participating as it unfolded live. And this was the, uh, let's see, 
Yeah, it was the putting on the brakes, which, you know, is a little bit of a counter of a trade up here. So getting up to these resistance levels, S&P is moving down, so Holly decides to make an entry here for the short. And of course, she pulls out 17 cents, gets out a little early, all right, profit save. Now, just to quickly recap the reasons that Holly will get out of a trade, we've got a stop loss, a profit target, or a timed hold. And we've also implemented a form of trailing stop to the up and the downside that will prevent Holly from letting a winner turn into a loser. So when you see this profit save as the exit reason, a lot of the time she's pulling the trigger a little early. All right. Um, so a lot of the times if we think that we can get a little bit more out once we notice Holly uh, exiting, um, we can either exit with her. And as I like to say all the time, it's always better when you're brand new and you've taken a trade with Holly to, to dip one foot in the risk off pool. And if the chart dictates it, dip a foot in the risk on pool. So in this example here, Holly takes the short up here at the 2220 mark where I uh, draw a line. And also take note that when I click on a symbol here, it's going to populate the chart with those key metrics from Holly, her entry, and then the stop loss that was used for that trade. So we had a nice little move here. And Holly bailed after about 10.10, 10.35, about 25 minutes. And we all see that putting on the brakes is geared around a 60-minute hold time that we can tell right here from the uh, time stop column. So things got a little volatile for her right here in these wicks, and a lot of the times that's what's going to trigger um, that exit. But the interesting thing to point out is, okay, Holly gets out for 17 cents. How much more meat was left on the bone that I could have maybe pulled off here? And so just want to point out that risk on is just showing us what would have happened if we held the trade until the close. And because of the severe bounce here, if we would have held on to that thing, would have ended up losing a dollar six. Whereas in risk off mode, we make 17 cents. But this little guy right here shows us some interesting information. What was the maximum profit potential in the risk off mode? And we can see here, if we would have played the 50-50 game with Holly, let's say we were in 200 um, in, the, in the entry up here. And when we see Holly getting out, we're like, okay, let's take 100 off the table. We'll book our 17 cents along with Holly. But we're going to keep the other 100 and give a stop loss back to our entry point. So if it does move against us, we flat that one, but we still made the money on the first half. And so there was an extra, you know, 20 some odd cents that was potential if you covered in these areas here. And that's what the max profit column is showing us is in the risk off mode, what was the most you could have taken out of that trade. So if you haven't been watching the max profit column, um, you might want to add it and just keep in mind. You can add and subtract the columns that you do want to see or do not want to see simply by right clicking here and going to the columns and clicking on it. So the ones on the left are the ones that you're seeing. If you want to get rid of it, you just push it back over here. If you want to add a column, you just push it from here over to here. So you never know what your column uh, layout should be like until you start playing around with it. Um, so by all means, get in there and explore and uh, add that max profit column. All right, so decent amount of meat left on the bone there. A little bit more alpha could have been generated, as we can see from the dish trade. Um, wow, what a what a nice little intraday move there. I remember seeing that coming through my uh, my my low tickers on high volume today. And Holly uh, takes 16 cents. Of course, there was maybe another nickel uh, laying around there, but not near as noticeable as what we saw in the please trade. And pretty much other than those two and the rest, we can see here, the interesting thing here is the risk on chart today. And of course, this little spike that you saw here was basically a result of this trade right here, which was IONS today. And this doesn't happen very often, but we can see that IONS was triggered two times at the exact same time by two different strategies. 
All right, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen from time to time. Um, so the interesting thing about this one is it reemphasizes what I said earlier. Holly's strong suit is her are her statistically weighted entries. Does it do so well on exits? You know, once again, the only reason we had to install reduced risk and profit save is to keep her from letting winners turn into losers because not that advanced on the exit strategy. So it does well in that capacity, but sometimes gets us out a little too early. So let's see, I've got single click, which is why my chart keeps clicking here. But let's take a look at this ions chart because this was about the prettiest thing that I saw all day. So Holly tells us about it right here. All right. Nice entry, 4119. Now, Andy will tell you, this is like, when I see something like this, it doesn't take, you know, my, my, my fingers already reaching for the F12 key. Click, 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 get some of that. Because, number one, it's being produced by Holly. We know it has statistical weight behind it. So, continuation and got dough. We can see that the continuation, let's see, my eyes are playing tricks on me. Okay, 59.5% here. And then 64.9% here. So, you know, hey, even if you average the two out, what are we looking at? 62% uh, average on both of them. That's, that's some very nice statistical probability because theoretically you only have to have slightly above 50. We've got almost 60 and almost 65 here. So from a statistical standpoint, that's a double star right there. And then this pattern stands out to me because this is my favorite pattern. A simple range break. Well, I'll define range real quick here. The stock put in its low, opening five minutes. We draw a line. Put in its high, about 45 minutes into the open, and then it backs off. So therefore, it is range bound. Now, when we're dealing with the range bound stocks from a, I don't know, lack of a better description here, a quality standpoint, meaning how identifiable is this little consolidation area that we see here? You know, do you have to squint your eyes to see it? Do you have to stand 10 feet across the room? And then you're like, oh, okay, now I can see the lines. No, you don't. It sticks out pretty well here. So right at this entry, not only does it have double statistical weight behind it, but it's also breaking this plane. In other words, it's a range break. It's busting out of that range on this little wick here. Of course, our stop loss is down here. We have stop losses because... That's what we're willing to set. Holly sets her stop loss, but her simple trailing stop functionality to, you know, get her out in the reduced risk form or profit safe form is not that advanced. She can't read charts like we can. She doesn't see these. She sees more like shotgun patterns and analyzes the data in a different way. So we're a little bit better at reading the technical charts such as we see here. So if we're in this trade, Stop loss is here. Holly's getting out in this little consolidation area after this penetration's already been made. There's no way I'm getting out, okay? Um, you can still play the 50-50 game, but typically when this happens, we're gonna nice, have some nice follow through. Um, so, a lot of the times they'll hover around the area and they'll pass through it maybe once, twice, three times before they go. But as far as a low risk trade goes, you know, if I just saw this, if this was not brought to my attention via Holly, I still would have loved it because the lead up to this penetration is nice. In other words, it's not vertical. You know, we didn't didn't just run up 1% to get there. And your, you know, your brain's telling you, well, as soon as I buy this, it's going to pull back. So maybe I better wait. You know, we've got a nice smooth run up here. And so when you see this with statistical weight behind it, it's not a very hard buy decision never came close to the stop loss, and then we had a very nice continuation to the upside. So probably the best trade that I saw all day today, and, you know, Holly gets nervous and gets out for an eight-cent loser, you know, and then... Somebody's asking where, the, where is the stop price, uh, sure. uh, the initial stop, where is it uh, on your... Yeah, I see it up there, but uh, is it oh, in the uh, AI strategies window? Uh, right, well... Here I am looking at the trade blotter, okay? So we can see right here, when the trade is issued, we can see that the smart stop being used is 45 cents. Now on continuation, 
that is geared, uh, that one's using a 50 cent stop loss continuation. And then Gato is using a smart stop value. So the stop loss for this entry was the smart stop value of 45 cents. This is just displaying what the smart stop would be for any of these. Now that doesn't mean that the strategy is using the smart stop. We can see what this what the stop losses are for each respective strategy. So they can use the smart stop, but that information is going to be located here per strategy. So in essence, two different stop loss prices were being used for this one. 20 cents for this one and Okay, uh, and she's also asking uh, uh, what what exactly does a smart stop mean? Uh, what we tell her just kind of it's just it's basically an algorithm. I mean, it's a right, and I can give you a general description. <clears throat> it's it's something that we came up with about seven years ago. Um, pretty much as everything that's developed here was out of necessity or a need that one of us or an idea that one of us came up with, and. A lot of it was centered around the algorithmic trading that we were doing in the early days where we were creating the events and this using a 50 cent stop loss across the board. Okay, well, you know, the 50 cent stop loss isn't very good if it's a hundred dollar stock, right? And if it's a five dollar stock, it's too big, right? So the smart stop takes the average 15 minute volatility for each and every stock and looks at it. Then it looks at how much volume is coursing through the stock compared to what is normal. And it will multiply those two factors together based on volume and volatility to come up with a, a, a unique smart stop for each and every stock dependent upon those criteria. So it's a much more scientific methodology uh, for coming up with a stop per stock based on its own personality. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think that's you, you. Yeah, she says great explanation. Um, one other th a question going above is: um, uh, I would like to gr group all windows uh, uh, for, say, the AI channel, and then open another program window, say the trading room, and have it over the TI windows. Then, when I want to go back to all my TI windows, I want to just click once somewhere and have them all come to the front. Okay. All right, so let's pretend for a moment I just pulled my Twitter feed over here and, you know, we could say this is the trading room, right? Well, here's the trade ideas toolbar up here. If I minimize the toolbar, all my TI windows are minimized, right, at once. And to reactivate, I just find my toolbar, re-click, and they all appear again. Um, Currently, that's the only way to get all TI windows to minimize simultaneously. Um, I'm not sure if that was what the question was. Yeah, that, that's the only thing I could think of too, Jamie, but I, I think he's probably wanting to keep them both up. I, I know what he's talking about. He's probably, he's limited on his uh, screen space. Screen and he, space yeah, he may, he may be trying to, um, uh, uh, you know, just have, not, not, minimize there anything down to the taskbar, keep everything up, but be able to click on one thing. Since they're all free floating window, that's going to be tough to do there, uh, Tree. Uh, it's, um, I just don't see any way to, uh, around it than, than the way he showed you. Right. Other than, you know, well, you know, if, I guess if you were trying to access a browser, right, that was behind everything like that, you know, you can always make a little hole down here. Of course, you'd have to click on, you know, you have to click on each and every TI window again, right? Um, so I, I think I understand the, the dilemma. Unfortunately, I'd, I, I don't think we have a solution for that at this point. Now, you can minimize the, the, uh, the trading room. You can, you can go in there and kind of collapse the chat, and, uh, so, and so you can uh, see, you know, more of, of Barry's room or expand the chat if chat is what you're interested in. So there's ways to negotiate that uh, trading room to make it uh, smaller or, or, you know, or bigger. So 
Yeah, you're just going to have to work with, within its within the confines for right now. It, we we found out that it's more beneficial to have all the windows free floating because people like to put them all over the monitors sometimes, and it come they come in very handy when they're when they're all free floating like this. Okie dokie. So we'll go over one more Holly trade today. So you know, just keep in mind it was a pretty uh, uneventful day for the AI. A lot of statistical noise. So to see it down, you know, this much on risk on. If you're holding all day, not a big surprise. The only green spot, if you were holding all day, was in the IONS trade. And then, you know, in risk-off mode, basically a lot of trades. We could just say that Holly kind of churned today, you know. Made a bunch of trades, lost a little bit of money against the market. Um, oh, well, Monday's another day, and it should be very interesting. So we'll go over one more risk-off or risk-on type trade here since we've got everything up. This is uh, from the quarterback strategy. Which was uh, which shows up quite frequently, and showed up today at 61 and a half percent probability. So when we take a look at the old mime, Holly once again gets a little jittery when she's up, takes an 11 cent profit uh, in that stock, and we can see right here is where she bought into it or gave the buy signal. So Holly was in that trade all of. A little over 15 minutes, it looks like. So she gets out right here in these wicks. But as we can see, you know, if you held to the close, you got paid 33 cents. Um, of course, it topped out a little bit higher up here. So there was another, you know, a maximum of 16 cents in there. You know, just a nickel, but on a percentage basis, that adds up over time. And usually there are a lot more of these to go over, but just due to the nature of the day, you know, Holly just put in a little lackluster performance, but every system has to take its little losers every once in a while. And when they do lose, we like to see them lose small. So Holly did a good job at, at maintaining a long blotter today in the face of this. So, you know, hey, as far as I'm concerned, good job, Holly. Now, I want to spend a couple of minutes here, and let me just check the time. Yeah, we're doing good. Talking about compare count windows. So if I come up to the toolbar and I spawn a new compare count window and click OK, we get this little guy right here. And so now let's right click and go into the configuration area and we have a side for green data and a side for red data. Now when we go into these uh, these configuration areas here you're going to notice, hey, it looks and feels like I'm inside of an alert window, and that's because you are. So we can put different strategies in the green side and the red side. Typically, you want them to be inverses of one another. So if you're looking at all stocks hitting high in the green, you're going to want to be looking at all stocks hitting lows in the red. So then when we start watching this window, if we're looking at the broad market, every time a stock hits low or a high, this little guy is going to keep count and it's going to start showing you a ratio. So you might see after the first 15 minutes of the market, hey, we've got 65% green, which means there's a big bias to the upside or vice versa. Now, of course, if you just check out high and low, you're going to get everything in the kitchen sink. All these little weird stocks that you wouldn't want to trade, you know, literally anything hitting a new penny high or low is going to be reported. But that would be the broad markets, right? Well, we have to get a little bit more specific than that. So, you know, for my own personal layout, I like to keep tabs on what the big boys are doing. In other words, what are the institutions buying and selling uh, on any given day? Because that's where the party is, in my opinion. So what I've done, let's see, do I even have that window up here? Maybe, maybe not. Let's just go ahead and load it from the cloud real quick. I've got photos of it, but... We should see the real one. Let's see. Maybe I can just sort by window type here. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right. So this is the window that I'm going to be talking about right here. It's just, it's the same compare count window. It's got the dark background because I'm just, let's see, where is it? I've got this guy checked. You can have the white or the dark. I just prefer 
a darker background. So when we go into this one, we'll take a look at the, you know, these are just the, uh, the same strategies that are down here in, in these two bottom windows. I've got the turbo breaks up, which is simply stocks hitting a new high with some simple filter criteria. Market capitalization has to be 5.4 billion. I didn't just pick that at random. That's the minimum market cap for an S&P 500 component. However, just because it has that market cap does not mean it's part of the S&P. So this is not an exact mirror to the S&P, so keep that in mind. Uh, the volume on the one minute time frame, which is this bottom filter, has to be three times or higher compared to what is normal for a one minute candle on that stock as far as volume goes. 100% would be normal. I'm requesting three times normal or higher. I don't really care if the stocks, I don't care what their earnings are. The only reason I have this filter in place is because we figured out it's a nice so the workaround to weed out ETFs and iShares because they don't report earnings. So by de facto, having this filter setting in there will get rid of all the ETFs and iShares and that way we don't have to rely on our custom filter list and maintain a list. So it makes our job a lot easier. And you might notice there is no average daily volume. Well, just because I don't need it because this usually takes care of that. Most of those stocks coming through, highly liquid, highly capitalized. So the filter set is the same in both of these strategies, except one's looking at those hitting lows and those hitting highs. So what I do is after the first 20 minutes of the market is up, I look at my compare account window for these large cap stocks. This is what it showed me after the first 20 minutes today. All right, 57% sell bias. And at that point in time, I was thinking, okay, all right. So then what I do after 20 minutes is up is I want to know if that trend is either reversing or staying the same. But what I've noticed, you know, watching this day in, day out, month after month, year after year for the better part of 10 years, is that usually the 20-minute the opening count is the tell. And even still to this very day, sometimes I doubt it. But let me share with you what happened today. So we get this count in the opening 20. I duplicate. In the next 20 minutes, I see this. I'm like, well, I guess today, you know, the metric's just off because usually the opening 20 minutes is the tell. And so I saw this metric today, and I'm like, well, I guess everything has to stop working at some point in time or get a little bit spotty, you know, so I'm telling myself, well, you know, today it just didn't work out like that, you know. It was not the tell. And then, of course, we went up, flatlined here, and then eventually, whoosh. Now, it helped, it helped me learn something today because what did I learn? And Andy and I were just discussing this. I'm like, you know what, that sure is what it feels like because – we all know that when the market opens, there's this huge volume glut that goes on, right, for the first 15, 20, 30 minutes. It's like when the floodgates open at the dam, whoosh, and then they slowly start to trickle, and that's what we call the, the normal rest of the day. But if, you're, if, if the institutions were queued up to sell, well, then a huge portion of that volume gets done on the open, but they can't just slam it all at once. They have to back off and start parsing it out, right? However, what this reading told me today and what I can extrapolate from it is that there was an extraordinary amount of that selling in that time frame today compared to what is normal. So it still was the tell. It left footprints, and that's what this window caught. It's like, okay, well, I don't care what's going on in the second 20-minute period. I can tell you that there was a high, higher than normal amount of selling in the opening 20, and so a little breather, and sure enough, the sellers came back in. So very eye-opening experience today, and you know these compare account windows, they're probably some of the most underused windows uh, in the product, but I'm telling you, if you start watching these things, they really do give you a good look at what's under the rug because 
whatever it is that you feel is special, you can keep count of it. And if you can keep count of it, well, there's other people that keep count of things in Vegas. They're called card counters. And they make money consistently. That's why they'll kick those players out or maybe even something worse if they catch them. But the beautiful thing about card counting in this capacity is nobody can do anything about it. You know, we accumulate our informational edge using statistics and things of this nature. And we give you the tools to create new things, you know. New things are always being created within trade ideas. We're only limited by our imagination. And the more time you spend in front of the product, the more raw information you're feeding your brain, otherwise known as the idea factory. And once you keep, you keep feeding that thing that's got the raw materials that it needs, then you're going to create new ideas. So I'll happily drop this into the chat window in case anybody wants to start watching it. Um, the best way to get to know it is to start watching it and just start to notice these correlations. Very, very good stuff, Jamie. Yeah, we, we were both talking about that. And it's, it's, a, it, it's kind of a way where when you see an anomaly like that, you can see where you, you kind of scratch your head, like what's really going on here where the spiders are moving higher, but the underlying internals are actually decaying. Uh, so very good stuff. Yeah, you can, you can glean a lot, of, a lot from that, I think. Um, and I tell you what I'm going to do, guys. We we do. It is the last uh, uh, webinar we're going to have uh, 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 this week, uh, and then we're not going to be doing our support webinar on Monday. So we're going we're going to open up the rest of the floor. I mean, I, I mean, uh, what I what I had, uh, I can save it for next next week. It's, you guys are not going to miss nothing anything from that, but. Because uh, I'm having trouble actually typing and for some reason uh, getting my answers in here. So I'd like to just answer you guys uh, uh, verbally. So, uh, uh, yes, Brian, if you'll, if you'll get those, uh, Barry, if you saw those alert, alerts in Barry's room, Barry is real good. You can, you can ask him about those at any time. I'm sorry we don't have, um, I don't have those alerts. Barry would, would give them to me if I asked, but I just... Uh, I just don't have access to them right now, so I can't really go over them with you. But since they're his alerts, he's probably the best person to ask to explain it. So, um, uh, which is a real good topic, you, uh, guys. You, you are going to um, you're going to see uh, alerts from Ross Cameron, myself, Jamie, uh, and but unless you know how to use those alerts, it, they're not going to do you a whole lot of good. So. Uh, I know a lot of you are new, and you want all these cool alerts. They're going to shit. They're going to be the golden goose and go, you know, the holy grail. But uh, but really, they can help you. They're great idea generations. But you have to you you need to know how to use them, uh, and that's why it's so important that you get to learn, you know, how to uh, create your own alerts, how to configure and manipulate and change alerts and all that, because that's when you can really start making some magic happen. And uh, uh, but uh, but anyway, yeah. So we'll you guys, uh, if you want to, just just fire away, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish up here the last oh five or ten minutes before we bring Scott on to just answer any questions that you might have. And uh, let's see who was that one I missed. Mike had one. Sure. Is there a way of showing relative strength between the S and P and an individual stock? or an individual, uh, individual stock and one of its close competitors through the use of compare account window? Well, I think you'd have to have a, a compare account window pointed at that individual stock. Well, am, I not, am I not correct, Jamie, probably? Um, right. You know, it's, it's pretty much you have to kind of, st I mean, if you put, uh, you know, you have a red and a green side, so how are you going to do it? And I just don't see any way that you could, you know, because if you put one on the green side, you know, put, company XYZ on the green side, put company ABC on the red side, well, you're going to get all the red alerts for one and all the green alerts for the other. So yeah. it's really designed for things that you can invert, right? Yeah. Same filter set, but different, you know, diametrically opposed alerts, you know, high versus low, um, things of that nature. That's where I've found the most benefit from it. However, today I was playing around with, you know, what if I really wanted to keep my pulse on the fingers of a single stock, right? 
in the theoretically in the green side I could check off every bullish alert and point only to that stock and then the, in the other one uh, every bearish alert and point only to that single stock so we can see when the positive events are overtaking the negative events or vice versa right that might be an interesting thing to to watch you know I just kind of had that idea today I was like you know come Monday I'm gonna have a couple of those windows queued up and see if there's any correlation uh, to say when a stock bounces you know uh, if it's if it's at 55 percent red and then it, it bottoms out and wicks and all of a sudden you start to see it go 50 50 and then 51 green 52 green that's because a lot more bullish type events are happening versus bearish. So is there anything to that theory? Maybe. It's something that I'll definitely explore and monitor in the new week. Okay, Brian, I will definitely, if, if he'll give me back, I will, I will talk about the alpha predator uh, for sure. Uh, if you want to give me that screen back real quick, Tammy, thank you, sir. There you go. Okay. I will go ahead and talk about a little bit about this one. This is kind of the one I was going to highlight on anyway. This is my Alpha Predator Pro. Now, we do have an Alpha Predator that looks for more obscure stocks, uh, lower float stocks, uh, have you. Uh, but this is what I call the Alpha Predator Pro, which I'm looking for stocks that are a little more liquid. Uh, they do a, a higher average daily volume. I'm looking for stocks. If I go to the configuration window, uh, price is at least five dollars. The average daily volume in the three months has to be at least five hundred thousand shares a day. And I'm looking for a little, actually a little less, because I know once stocks, the more liquid they become, it's it's hard to find that uh, extreme volume coming in. So I'm just using a three a three times uh, normal five minute volume uh, filter. And that's about it. And, and the rest of the filters are the same as the Alpha Predator. And basically, this is what you're looking for. Change in the five-day has to be up at least 0.1%. Change in the five-minute has to be up 0.2%. So these don't have to be huge moves. Change from the close has to be up 0.2%. Uh, Not huge moves. Position and range doesn't have to be a high for today. Remember, this is a, 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 a top list and not a, an alert window. So you're not being alerted. So as long as the range is within 30% from hitting its intraday high, you are, you're going to see it as long as the other filters are being satisfied. Remember, it's all or none. And I will show you one uh, that came through, through here today. If I go back to my... Uh, this is the Alpha Predator Pro this morning at 9:10. That's my time, so this would be this would be 10:10 Eastern time. And this MDGX came through, uh, doing, you know, 15 times normal five-minute volume. Came through at 10:20. You can see it there. Did it catch the breakout right on it? No, because these things refresh every 30 seconds. So maybe you missed the first, uh, you know, 15, 20 cents of the move. That's okay because if I'm looking at this for a swing trade, and a lot of times I do because I'm looking for a continuation out of a out of a range breakout. And if I go to the next, you're going to see what I'm looking at here, and that's where it went off at 10:20. We're always saying look left. You got a beautiful breakout there, there, and this is the kind of this is the way you can use momentum alerts or momentum top list. This is a momentum top list, alpha predator. It's even got kind of momentum in the name. So. That's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. Jeez, uh, uh, MDX, geez, is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I thought so. So look what you're looking here on the daily chart. Just you know, a beautiful pattern breakout. So even if you don't catch the first 10 or 15 cents, you're still getting alerted nicely. You know, at 20 cents there when it's high as 1074, and this in all likelihood, I, I shouldn't say in all likelihood, but it stands a really good chance of continuing its momentum higher because you got a sweet, just incredible breakout, not only through a huge range, but you have the psychological 10 number there that's also breaking out of. So a way to use uh, Alpha Predator Pro for a potential swing trade, not only, not to mention the momentum it had in the, in the day trading time frame as well. All right. Do we have any more questions flying through, Scotty, or do you think we got them all, Miss Scotty? 
I can't believe it. Jamie. <laughs> well, no, there. Hey, I was just answering a guy's question. He was asking, you know, what's new with the latest release? And if you go to our homepage and you click on the download TI Pro button, it takes you to the the, the current distribution uh, version, and it tells you what all's new. And if you scroll down to the beta version, you can also download the beta version, and underneath there, it will also tell you what is new since the last update. Mm -hmm. uh, Leslie, I would. Uh, uh, why does it update every thirty seconds? Good question. Now, a multi-strategy, which is a, a combination of several alerts in one window. So these are alerts. You're going to get real-time prints, uh, time and price. But you have to remember, this is there's no alerts in here. It's only filters. So stocks, when they satisfy all your filters, they will enter into your top list. So if you tried to update it every two or three seconds, it would just be a mess because there's constantly stocks flying in and out of there. So you just so, so just so it's legible, you 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 basically have to uh, do it every thirty seconds because otherwise it would just you would you'd miss so much stuff. Some some decent setups. Is there a number of open? I think we cap people out at a hundred total windows, um, but I've never really noticed the lagging of my system from the number of windows open. But what will bog your system down? is if you have a top list open and by default it'll show you the first 100 stocks that meet your filter criteria but you can max it out at 1000 so if you have a thousand list top list up there or some people may have several or a couple of 500s or whatever when that list refreshes every 30 seconds you might notice a bogging down of your system so since everybody's system is a little bit different you kinda have to find your happy threshold um, so that could be it. So you might want to check your top list and make sure you don't have, you know, any thousand count symbol lists, uh, things of that nature. All right, guys. Well, listen, it's been a great week. I've I've noticed a lot of you guys in, in a lot of the uh, support webinars we had, and also coming to our webinars. You're you're putting in the you're putting in the hard work it takes to to learn and to master this very powerful software. Um, now Scotty's going to come in now and, and, and talk a little bit more about our IB uh, uh, Brokerage Plus and, and also we'll talk about our podcast and then uh, give you a little discount code with, but, uh, to go along with uh, uh, to close out our presentation today. Scotty, you around? Sure. Yeah, if you're an interactive brokerage client, uh, go ahead and get the newest beta. Just go to tradeideas.com slash beta to take you to that part of the page and get it. And uh, you can connect your interactive broker account to our Brokerage Plus module, which will let you set up automatic trading or gray box, either black box or gray box trading. And uh, I'll manage your portfolio directly from within uh, Trade Ideas so you can trade strategies automatically. Uh, there's a video on our YouTube channel that shows how to do all of this. Uh, you can go to the search on the YouTube channel and just search for Brokerage Plus, and that should come right up. So if you're an inter and if you have any questions about it, just email our support. If you're an interactive brokerage client, we'll help you get that going. Uh, we have a podcast. Uh, there's no new episode this week because of the holiday tomorrow, but we will be returning next week, and uh, we encourage everyone to go ahead and search for Trade Ideas Podcast. It'll be on the next yeah. Trade Ideas Podcast in your favorite podcast app, and it should turn up. You can just click on the subscribe button. Then the very next time we upload a new one, which will be next Friday, you'll have that. And in the meantime, you can listen to some of the archived episodes. Last week was really good, so uh, check it out. There's a code that will give you 15% off, and uh, that's Guide to Alpha, just like you see it on your uh, screen there, all caps for the, for the letters. And that saves off either Trade Ideas Standard or Premium. Remember, both premium and standard include a full hour of one-on-one -on -one training with one of our educators like Andy or Jamie or Steve. 
and it's uh, one of the best ways to get a head start on the system. So after you become a member and a subscriber, go ahead and uh, watch some of our training videos. Um, go to the trading room for a few days, and then once you have your questions kind of in order, go ahead and book an appointment. Just click on support and training and go ahead and do that. Uh, any questions at all, email us info at trade-ideas.com is the best support line for you. Uh, you can also um, call the phone number if you have a billing issue. However, we don't encourage technical support with that number. We do encourage the technical support to go to the info at trade-ideas.com email because that will get routed to the correct team member to answer your question correctly. Uh, Facebook.com slash Trade Ideas Pro is where to find us on Facebook. So if you follow our page there, you'll get some unique content that you can share with your friends and spread our love. Follow Jamie at QuantBot on Twitter. Steve Gomez is at Today Trader. Dan Merkin is at Trade Ideas one and we also have at Trade Ideas. Thanks, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll check in on Monday, and uh, the test drive still continues next week. Uh, we don't have the special content like our special support webinars. However, uh, those of you that entered the test drive still have at least Monday in your test drive, or if you registered late, you might have Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, th through Tuesday or Wednesday as well. So have a great one. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you, Andy and Jamie. Hey, thanks, Scott. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Enjoy. Have a great weekend. Enjoy. Bye.